Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a busy couple of days for the Justice Department. Just now, I met with the trial team whose work secured the convictions yesterday evening of five defendants associated with the Oath Keepers organization. And yesterday afternoon, I was briefed by the attorneys and staff who were involved in a major environmental justice matter, addressing long-standing failures in the city of Jackson's public drinking water system. Today, I want to share more about these two significant matters of public interest. I also want to highlight several other matters that did not garner the same level of attention, but that are emblematic of the work that this department does every day. When I began my tenure as Attorney General, I laid out three co-equal core priorities for the Department of Justice. To uphold the rule of law, to keep our country safe, and to protect civil rights. Our work yesterday marked significant successes on each of these fronts. Early yesterday evening, a jury in the District of Columbia found five defendants associated with the Oath Keepers guilty of serious crimes related to the January 6, 2021 attack on the United States Capitol. Two defendants were convicted of seditious conspiracy against the United States for conspiring to oppose by force the peaceful transfer of presidential power. Those two defendants and the three other defendants were also convicted of obstructing the certification of the Electoral College vote. And various defendants were also convicted of different additional felony counts, ranging from conspiring to prevent members of Congress from discharging their duties, to interfering with law enforcement officers attempting to guard the Capitol during the attack, to tampering with relevant evidence after the fact. These convictions were the result of tireless work by Justice Department agents, attorneys, analysts, and support staff beginning in January 2021 with a methodical collection of evidence and continuing through the presentation of that evidence during the seven-week trial that began in October of 2022. Their skill and dedication are in the very best tradition of the Justice Department and we are all extremely grateful to them. During the trial, the government's evidence showed that almost immediately following the November 2020 election, defendant Stuart Rhodes, the founder and leader of the Oath Keepers, began planning to oppose by force the peaceful transfer of power. With Rhodes, defendants Kelly Meggs, Kenneth Harrelson, Jessica Watkins, and Thomas Caldwell communicated and planned to travel to Washington on or around January 6, 2021. On January 6, as the government's evidence showed, defendants Meggs, Harrelson, and Watkins forcefully breached the U.S. Capitol wearing paramilitary gear while defendants Rhodes and Caldwell remained outside on the Capitol ground coordinating activities. Last evening, a jury of the defendants' peers found each of them guilty of serious felony offenses. As the verdict of this case makes clear, the department will work tirelessly to hold accountable those responsible for crimes related to the attack on our democracy on January 6, 2021. Yesterday, the department also secured a significant achievement for environmental justice in Jackson, Mississippi. In August of this year, a water system failure caused many Jackson residents to lose access to running water for over a week. This resulted in local, state, and federal emergency declarations and the deployment of emergency responders and drinking water infrastructure experts to Jackson. And as the residents of Jackson know all too well, the August failure occurred after years of problems with the water system. Attorneys and staff from our Environment and Natural Resources Division's Environmental Enforcement Section, from the newly formed Office of Environmental Justice, and from the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Mississippi, quickly went to work with our partners at EPA to address the water crisis facing 160,000 residents of Jackson and Hines County. Yesterday, on behalf of the EPA, the department filed a federal complaint against the city, alleging that it has failed to provide drinking water that is reliably compliant with the Safe Drinking Water Act. At the same time, 
we filed a proposed interim order signed and agreed to by the City of Jackson, the Mississippi State Department of Health, and the EPA. The proposed order is designed to stabilize the city's public drinking water system while the United States, the city, and the State Department of Health attempt to negotiate a judicially enforceable consent decree to achieve the long-term sustainability of the water system. The proposed order would appoint an interim third-party manager to manage the city's drinking water system and implement a set of priority projects that are needed to remedy problems that have contributed to the city's water crisis. Yesterday evening, the court approved the interim order, giving it immediate effect. Much remains to be done, and the Justice Department and our partners at EPA will continue to work closely with the community to reach a long-term agreement that can ensure the delivery of reliable, clean drinking water. In doing this work, the Department's newly created Office of Environmental Justice will continue to play a critical role engaging with the community on the ground in Jackson. Although environmental justice can happen anywhere, injustice can happen anywhere, communities of color, indigenous communities, and low-income communities often bear the brunt of these harms. As we work to fulfill our responsibility to keep the American people safe, to protect civil rights, we will continue to prioritize cases like this one that will have the greatest impact on communities most burdened by environmental harm. I am very proud of the attorneys and investigators and staff whose unwavering commitment to the rule of law and tireless work resulted yesterday in these two significant victories for the American people. I am also very proud of other work that was being done at the very same time yesterday across the department. Work that drew less public attention than the two matters I've just discussed, but that is no less important to fulfilling this department's mission. I will mention only a few examples. Yesterday in Kentucky, we obtained an indictment alleging that an individual conspired with others to trick seniors across the country into sending cash payments under false pretenses that a grandchild or a loved one was in a car accident or legal trouble. Yesterday in Michigan, an individual was sentenced to 30 years in prison for the sexual exploitation of a child. Yesterday in Puerto Rico, an individual convicted of a hate crime against a transgender woman was sentenced to federal prison. Yesterday in Virginia, the department secured a guilty plea from an individual who illegally purchased a firearm that was used in three shootings. Yesterday in Washington State, an individual was sentenced for providing material support to ISIS, a designated foreign terrorist organization. Yesterday in Alabama, the department charged an individual with allegedly smuggling parts used in the oil and gas industry from the United States to Iran in violation of U.S. sanctions. And yesterday in California, 10 de defendants associated with a violent prison gang pled guilty to drug trafficking offenses. These cases represent just a small fraction of the work professionals of the department did yesterday and a small fraction of the work that they do every day to uphold the rule of law, to keep this country safe, and to protect the civil rights of all Americans. It is an honor to work alongside them. I'll now take a few questions. Um, what's the timeline for when residents in Jackson who are desperate to have their water be better quality, um, what's the timeline for when they might be able to see a market improvement in the water crisis there? Well, I, I would say this to the citizens of Jackson. We realize how horrible the circumstances are there. It's hard to imagine not being able to turn on a tap and get safe drinking water. We are approaching this with the greatest possible urgency and we believe our partners in this are doing so as well. So we will bring this to conclusion as soon as we possibly can. If I had a quick follow up, which is, why did the department want to take this dual action of an order as well as 
a, a complaint against the city, and how does that sort of connect to the department's overall environmental justice stance? So it's really two, two parts to the question, which is fine with me. <laughs> so the first part is we have to get something done immediately. The water is a problem right now, and we can't wait until a complaint is resolved. So the first thing we want to do is get an interim order, get the judge to sign, which the judge did last night, so that we can put in an interim manager and stabilize the circumstances. That's the purpose of the interim order. The purpose of the complaint is to allow us to negotiate, or at least attempt to negotiate, a consent decree, which will then be judicially enforceable. And that's the second part of the, of the question. Now, as to the, uh, how it relates to environmental justice, uh, in May of this year, we issued a comprehensive strategy for environmental justice, part of which, the first part of which is to prioritize actions in cases of overburdened and underserved communities, and that's what we are doing in, with respect to Jackson. Um, I, you know, I, the department's founding purpose was to protect the civil rights of American citizens. And part of the reason that I wanted to be the Attorney General was to work on those problems. This is an example of our using all the resources of the Justice Department on civil rights issues, not only the Civil Rights Division, but civil rights are an element of the Environment Division, of, uh, of every part of this component, and of the work that every uh, employee of this department um, um, in, in their ordinary, everyday work employs. Josh. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, can you tell us, have you had a chance to meet face-to-face -face yet with Special Counsel Smith, and how does the process stand of getting him up to speed on the investigations he's supposed to supervise, which, as we know from these trials and so forth, have been underway for more than a year? Yeah, so obviously, in, in the uh, course of deciding on Mr. Smith as Special Counsel, I did meet with him. He has been meeting with the members of his team to, uh, to get up to speed. As you already know, he's already signed um, a pleading in the 11th Circuit. Uh, he promised uh, to the American people in his own statement that uh, there would be no pause or hiccup in his work. And uh, I understand that that is exactly uh, what's going on now. Uh, Attorney General, you, uh, the committee on the Hill that is investigating January 6th uh, is almost finished with their work, and one of the things uh, we know that the department has been pushing for is access to some of these transcripts. Uh, our understanding is that that is still a work in progress. Can you give us an update on what, uh, what, whether the department is still pushing to get access to all of the transcripts of the witnesses uh, that that uh, committee has met with? We would like to have all the transcripts and all the, the other evidence collected by the community, so that uh, by the committee, so that we can use it in the ordinary course of our investigations. Are you satisfied that, that you've, uh, you've had the access that you need, or? We are asking for access to all of the transcripts, and uh, that's really all I can say right now. Jerry, last question. Um, so does the Rhodes verdict yesterday, does that create any momentum within the DOJ to pursue similar charges against other people who were not present at, um, on January 6th? I know this would be more special counsel, but um, why are we not? Well, I don't want to speculate on other investigations or other parts of other investigations. This is a this particular case is about uh, Mr. Rhodes and the other four defendants. As you well as you know, there's another uh, set of uh, oath keepers who start on Monday, and I don't want to talk anymore uh, in light of the fact that there's another trial beginning on Monday. All right, thanks everybody.